when we say that there are special rules or different rules or customs for marriage, for the oath, for loyalty, those things during those times and during this time. We are disagreeing with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has sent to all the prophets what he has sent to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember one thing, the universal principles of don't kill, don't cheat, don't lie, they have never changed. And you can never expect a righteousness or prophethood or in any way or form anything which is immoral. God cannot say to the people of Ibrahim wasalam, time, Moses wasalam, time, you can kill, you can cheat, you can rape, and I'm fine with it, and then come to us in 20th century America and say this is horrible. If he, would have, if he would have allowed us, he would have allowed us here in America because our situation is worse than over there. So God does not compromise, number one. Same principles of morality, loyalty, you know, marriage, what applies to the Adam wasalam, time will apply. Only the modific modification is going to be in details, number one. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has made it very clear in the Quran that Quran is musaddiqal lima bayna yadayhi min al tawrat wal injil that the Torah and the Injil were compromised historically and Quran has been sent as the character now whatever is in the Quran and is also in this present book is accepted Whatever is not in the Quran and is in that book could be accepted or rejected. But if something is there which contradicts the Quran, that must be rejected. Now on the issues of oneness of God, unity of God, monotheism, if anything is in this book which talks about polytheism, about making partners with God must be rejected. Anything which is moral and Ten Commandments say over there, don't kill, don't cheat, don't lie. Quran says the same thing. So if there is anything in the Gospel, in the Torah, which is in contradiction with that morality, must be rejected. So therefore, when the Quran says, believe in Torah and in Jeel, because don't forget that in this book, there are commandments which will contradict whatever the other additional stuff is there. When the Ten Commandments say, don't kill, don't cheat, what Judah did is cheating. Basically, lying. Not fulfilling the promise, because he promised her that I will marry you with my son. He did not fulfill the promise. As the chief of the tribe, if you give the word, you are supposed to be, not only as a human being, then don't cheat. Don't go and because you are in the inn, go to the prostitute, you are cheating your wife. It is clear-cut cheating. Then lying, then, then, then accusing her, who is this lady who brought this illegitimate church, you know, sowing righteousness after doing all of that. And then when no other excuse is there, when everybody knows this is his staff, this is his, and then coming out and accepting, that's not su such a greatness because now you are forced to it. This is what is deception, which even the Ten Commandments would say, don't do it. So what I'm seeing is, in this book, there is a message of morality. There is a message of one, one, one God, monotheism. But it is compromised by the way it has been put. Human beings have added to it. So that's where we differ. Injil and Torah were not different. They were the same thing. Jesus, peace be upon him, did not bring anything new. Muhammad Sallam did not bring anything new. The Aqidah, the moral principles are exactly the same which were from the beginning of humanity. The changes come in the details. Come, but the Quran says, well, ahlul fi. Let the people of Injil follow what is written in Injil. That does not deny that the Quran is not in existence. And then when the Quran says, let the people of Torah follow the Torah, whatever is in the Torah, it does not mean that the Quran is negated, that Quran is no more sacred. Because Quran does not believe that Torah, Injil, and Quran, they contradict each other. They supplement each other.
Okay? This is what is basically my main point. That if something comes from God, it basically protects its text, it protects its argument, and it protects itself against possible violation, immorality, or the violation of its principle. It's only human beings when they come in, they do not have the capability, knowledge, wisdom, and the comprehension. So their explanation or interpolation could be leaving loopholes. Now this is the main axiom where I am differentiating between the Bible and the Quran. 